Dr Joy Watson and I live in Salford, Greater Manchester. Uh, I've been living with dementia for the last six years, I think. <gasps> Hence the I think, because I can't remember. When the um, lockdown came into being, I needed to find something to do because I, I was, if I'm honest, getting quite lonely. And I looked on the internet and I, wa I wanted to find something that was a bit different and a bit messy. I used to do cross stitch and all that stuff, but well, one thing I can't see to do embroidery and stuff anymore. And another thing I just, I, as I said, I just wanted to do something that was a bit messy. And so I had a look at what you could make in concrete. Um, and I've just experimented. My, my my early work was was a bit dismal, but I'm learning as I go along. This is one of the things I made very early on. You can see it, it's a it's a toadstool. Well, I hope you can tell it's a toadstool. Um, and that was quite easy to make because I I use a lot of um, pop socks or tights, and I put the cement inside the tights. And then I hang it up for a string and uh, you can make like little creases in to make it look a bit, the, the surface a bit more, um, oh, oh, I can't remember the word. Anyway, so that's one thing I do. This is uh, a hand and what my intentions are is to, to make two hands with... Um, with a, a, a bird in the middle. This is nowhere near dry yet. You have to wait four weeks before you can paint them. But that, that's another project. And the fun bit in this is that you, 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 you make it with um, a rubber glove. This is Mr. Alzheimer's, which is destined for my own garden. He might end up on my grave, but you never know. He'd be painted in Mr. Alzheimer's colours, so he'll have yellow with a happy smiley face on one side and he'll have the blue sad face on the other side, which is our logo, really. I've, I've, I've adapted a, a workshop thing and I, I used one of, the, um, one of the old sides of a gazebo because the gazebo went to the tip ages ago. So I've used the... The, the material and I use that as a curtain so if it drizzles a bit or rains I draw the curtain it's got a window in it hey hey ho got crispy and dry oil glasses all sorts of tools so I'll show you just a couple of things if 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 you're gonna make a toastoy shape you need some mould. Now this is my mould, one of my moulds, and you have to stop the concrete sticking to your mould. So what we do is we put oil on, on the mould and hopefully whatever you make with the concrete just slips out. That's okay if you remember to oil the mould or if you put your cling film this is another way of making sure it comes out I try not to use cling film that often because I, I think of the environment although I do reuse it and reuse it I don't like going down the plastic route so that would be my, my thing now, if I take you into my little den, I can show you some of the other things I've made. And so this is this is my den, my dementia haven. This is where I come just to to get away from everything. And you have to improvise. I do that all the time. You can buy very expensive moulds. Very expensive moulds, but, 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 
why spend out all that money if you can get a pot or a jar or something from from your local charity shop which is what I tend to do okay so I'll just show you a few things that I've, I've made they are improving in style because it, 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 practice makes perfect I don't think they'll ever be perfect but I'm getting better that's made from a that's a dolphin made from a fluffy toy so that makes it really uh, economical you just soak your soak your toy in water and then soak it again in the concrete same with Mr. Alzheimer's he underneath there is a Mr. Alzheimer's teddy and he was soaked and that's what he's come out like but with Mr. Alzheimer's I tend to use my whatever this is called to just smooth him off a bit it does take forever and a day but during lockdown I've had ever and a day so I'm not bothered really right Mr. Alzheimer's you go over there and this is another one that I've made for my my daughter-in-law <laughs> and it, 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 it's amazing what you can use to, to make different uh, articles this is made out of an old towel what you do is you soak your towel then you soak it again in concrete and then you, you put it over something like that I've got a concrete bird bath stand and I stand it like that and that that's how we get the shape you can see I've got a few few um, toadstools in the making the way you get the, all the veins in it is to use tights or pop socks and you put your concrete in the sock but you don't smooth it out you, you leave it to get all wrinkled and then you've got your veins this was one of my first ones which is okay but I'm sure we can improve on it okay so I've got quite a few tools as you can see I like to be organized and I've got them all hanging up um, I think my files disappeared somewhere but I've got all my bits and pieces these are my favourite tools the ones that you actually smooth down with and make shapes with they're quite fun ok so I would normally wear my me, me rubber gloves so if we go and um, go and get a uh, if we go and get a leaf I can show you how to make a, a little dish out of a leaf. Right, let's set to and find ourselves a leaf. So, my thinking is to get a nice leaf that's got some really strong veins in. Now, I don't want that one because it's all manky. So, I think we'll take this one. It's got quite nice veins in. Okay, so to make our concrete mould with with the sand. We'll put plenty of sand on the tray. This is children's play sand. It's reasonably cheap, and we have to punch it up. Yeah. This leaf is, is, is quite good. The only disadvantage is there's a hole that some sluggers put in it, but we'll uh, we'll ignore that.
Now what we do is we put put the leaf onto the sand and make sure it's every part of the leaf is touching. This one's proving difficult because it's keeps springing up. And we don't want to get any sand on this side of the leaf because I did that in the first place. And you might be able to see all around there is sand that shouldn't be there. But we are learning as we go along. And then all we need to do is go and make some concrete. It really depends on what what you're making as to the consistency. I've learned over time. With these leaves they're quite delicate so you don't want great big heavy clumps of concrete. It just won't work. Okay, so this is where we don the rubber gloves. There's no point in trying to do anything with concrete without protection because the, the concrete and the, the chemicals burn your hands really easy. And plus the fact I don't like to mix the concrete because of my breathing doesn't do any good but here we go so we've got that one got that one ready and we dollop some in there hopefully this is going to be a um, another toadstool mm, it really depends how big we want it I don't actually want this one over big. Now something else I've learnt through trial and error is you need to get the bubbles out. So what I do is I bang it on the ground or on somewhere hard and all the bubbles should come up to the top. So this is where I do tend to use the cling film because obviously you can't can't put oil in the middle of your concrete. Now this would be the the stalk of the, of the mushroom and I've learned that much easier to make the hole for the stalk now than to try and drill out a hole when it's dry. So there we go that would be my hole for my stalk Once, once it's started to cure, it is quite good at holding things like this. Having said that, I've got a few strings that I string things onto. And if I was using the uh, tights or something, I would put the concrete in the tight and string, hold it by a piece of string. And that would make the shape I want. Just to make sure we keep stirring it or it separates and all the water comes to the top so really depends what you're going to use your leaf sculpture for I sometimes make them into little dishes um, put trinkets and things in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep it away from the away from the sand. It's quite difficult. Where's my um my nice little thing? There we go. One of my favourites. Doesn't help that my hand shakes all the while, but. So we get up as near to the edge as we can without picking up a load of sand. It is easier if it's on a turnstile 
because you can just continually shape what you want makes life a bit a bit easier okay so that is sort of sort of finished and again we have to bang it and if we were making something quite quite um, substantial I put some of this in it's it's stuff that plasterers use but it makes your your creation much stronger so you just put a bit of this in, in one of the one of the at this point you do have to cover it up for 24 hours because if it if it, if it, if it dries too quickly it will just just powder and go so what we do is we put this over that keeps the moisture in and the exciting bit for me is when you 24 hours later you take it off the sand and then you peel back the leaf and you've got all the veins and it's quite quite um, quite rewarding really so with this one I've, 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 I've done this and this is this has been painted quite a while you have to leave it quite a while so it, it doesn't stick so what I do she says I'm trying to get the pen to work We put put a few a few spots on, so it looks a bit more like a. And as you can see, it comes alive, comes to life when you've got a few spots on. And underneath, you've got like some of the mould growing underneath. I suppose it helps that I do um, that I do love to go and photograph what well, I did go and photograph different fungi and my son bought me a book to identify all the different fungis uh, I never ever touch them but I do you are allowed to it's called dress them so you can cut around all the weeds and the grass so you've just got a good view of the of the fungi so sometimes I, I do some of these designs from the book. But as you can see, it's pretty easy really. And once it's dry, you can either varnish over it or you can um, put a waterproof sealant on, which is what I do for, the, for these things and Mr. Alzheimer's who's going to sit outside I would put a water thing okay so there we go I just feel as if I've accomplished something that I'm not just sitting watching the telly and that I can look at the things and think yeah I can improve on that a little bit by doing this or that so that gives me a challenge um, and I just feel I suppose it's a, 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 a means of escape for me, and it really works. I mean, mixing up a sponge mixture or something wouldn't have the same effect. But there's so much to learn, and I, 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 I've just, it's filled my time and it's filled my brain with something other than COVID or dementia or being stuck indoors. <laughs>